Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's spend the next 20 minutes to explore the deep sea together. Before we dive into the deep sea, let's take some warming up exercises, okay? Now look at this picture. Who is it? Who is it? Yeah, Monkey King, right? Okay, in, China, in English, that's Monkey King. Now, Monkey King is regarded as somewhat idle by a lot of people because he can not only fly up to the sky, but also go deeper in the underground, as well as plunge deeply into the bottom of the ocean. Is that right? It seems that the ancient people created this image to show their strong desire for achieving the ability to reach wherever they wanted to go, but there was mythology and imagination. Nowadays, due to the modern, the progress of the modern science and technology, human beings have brought those imaginations into reality. For example, this is not an ordinary step. It's a small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So can you guess who said it? Yes, that's said by Neil Armstrong, the first person ever landed on the moon, right? And apart from that, we human beings are also engaged ourselves in exploring the ocean. For example, this is our national pride. It's made in China, right? Jiaolong. And it has reached very deep in the ocean. Now, can you guess or do you know the figure how deep it has ever reached? Can you guess? 60? 60? 6,600, okay, quite close, actually, quite close. It's actually 7,062 meters okay, under the sea. It seems that we are not very familiar with this topic because we ordinary people do not have the opportunity to observe the deep ocean by ourselves, is that right? Um, that's why we're going to focus on this field of research, okay, in the, in the following essay. Before we come to the ACE itself, let's use the following video clip to open up the prelude for the, a uh, for the theme of the ACE. Now let's see, apart from SpongeBob, what are the other creatures living in the sea? Quite ugly, is that right? And looks ferocious actually. But we also have some beautiful creatures, right? Shining. And sparkling. These are not visitors from an alien planet. Nor are they science fiction. They are real. Creatures of our own world. Their destiny is linked to ours. Okay, the very last sentence, and their destiny is linked to ours, actually reveals what the author wants to express in the following essay. Okay, now let's come to examine the text itself. Uh, well, for this text, actually, we can easily figure out the main point, because let's see, the title of the essay itself is quite long, right? It's long enough to be a complete sentence. When we explore the deep sea, we're exploring for our own survival. That's why it's quite easy for us to get the main, main idea by combining the key words, that is, to explore the deep sea for human survival. And that theme is also explicitly stated by the author in paragraph four and paragraph five. And then the author has used four examples and a conclusion to approach the major theme. But if we just examine those examples separately, we may see that they are loosely connected to each other. But if we pay close attention, we may also read that right after each of those examples, the author has added up one more key sentence to explain what he really wants to say. Is that right? Now, that is to say, if we want to grasp the hidden idea of what the author wants to express, we will have to understand the meaning of those key sentences. And now, let's see how they come up as an organic code to connect those examples. Uh, for example, the first 
in the very uh, at the very beginning, in the first example, the author has mentioned a discovery of a creature. Is that right? Now, can you find out the name for that creature in the first paragraph? Yeah, how to read it? Silicons, right? Okay, very good, very good. That's the discovery of silicons. But now, why does the author mention silicons? What's special about it? We human beings have believed that silicons have become extinct a long time ago. Is that right? But quite recently, we found it. We found a specimen in the ocean. So what? It's just an example. And it doesn't tell us any extra information, is right? That's why the author added up one more key sentence right after it. What he really wants to say is, man's influence is as yet but a passing shadow. Now, the author is using passing shadow to describe influence. He's doing kind of comparison, is right? He's, uh, he has compared influence to passing shadow uh, in the sentence pattern of A is B. So that is a typical sentence pattern of metaphor, right? Metaphor. But then why does the author use passing shadow to describe influence? Let's see. If something is passing, it means coming very quickly, right? How about the shadow? If you are walking in the moonlight, you will have a shadow follow you everywhere you go. Is that right? But comparatively speaking, which one do, do you think is more important? Your body or the shadow? Yes, of course, the body, right? The body is more important. So, in this way, we may also say the shadow is always something less important, right? That's what the author really means. Nowadays, we human beings still have no important influence on the deep sea, okay? And then, apart from this first example, the author also mentioned discovery of another creature, whereas in um, paragraph two and three, is that right? Now, can you find out? The name of that creature in paragraph two and three. We also mentioned another one. Yes, very good. That's the giant squid, right? So this time, why giant squid? What's special about it? Everybody knows that giant squid is said to be the largest creature in the ocean, but nobody sees it. It's even larger than the whales, is it right? Nobody have ever discovered it until very recently in 2012. A team of scientists filmed it in the deep ocean. So, what does the author really mean by giving this example? Let's see. Yes, it's an exciting discovery, but still a drop in the vast ocean-sized bucket. So then, how do you understand this sentence? We have Roughly the same sentence pattern, right? A is B, okay, as we, ha uh, as we had in the first example. So here, again, we're using another, the figure of speech of metaphor, right? But then how do you understand a drop in a vast ocean-sized bucket? If a bucket is ocean-sized, is it small or large? Yes, of course, it's very large, right? How about drop of water? Yeah, not quite small, but very small, right? Okay, comparatively speaking. That is to say, the discovery of the giant squid is an exciting one, but still, is it a small step or a big step? Yeah, a small step, right, for exploring the deep sea. Okay, it seems that we human beings have no enough explorations of the ocean. That's why we need to explore it, is that right? But how? Now, let's take a look at the third example. The scientist himself, uh, the author himself is a scientist, right? So their team has carried out somewhat experiment by sinking a dead well under the sea to observe how the other creatures react and how the ecosystem is working on. And this time, he is using another sentence pattern, A is like B. Now we use the like explicitly, right? Still he's doing comparison. He compared the whole ocean to antique watch. You know, antique means old, right? To an old watch, okay? And this time it's a bit different from the previous two sentence patterns. We are using the simile. Now why does he compare the ocean to antique watch? 
Let's see. This is the inside of an antique watch, right? If you want to figure out how those spare parts and gears come to form up an organic code and how they come to function, you will have to crack it open, right? That's the same. If you want to observe the ecosystem of the ocean, the only way is to dive into it, is that right? You will never get the answer if you just stay on the surface of the water, okay? You will have to dive into it and carry out something as their team has done, right? So they are doing some, what are they doing? Yes, very good, exploration, very good. Or you can also say, exactly, they are actually doing experiments, right? Or exploration, okay, that's it. That's the only way to get an answer. Uh, right after that, you see, during the process of exploring the deep sea, we will also confront a lot of challenges, right? Among which the lack of funding is one. That's why the author has compared space exploration and sea exploration. Now earlier, now in the leading part, we, we knew that human beings have engaged in space exploration long time ago. And thus we have made so many achievements, right? But that's not necessarily the case for sea exploration because we don't have it we do not have enough money. So what's the result? And here he mentioned we have better maps of the surface of Mars than we do of our own planet's sea floor. Right here, the map does not literally mean the map itself. It should be it should mean something broader, right, and wider. It stands for something larger, okay? Let's see, what does the map stand for? What's the metaphoric use of this word? Can you guess the meaning? Can you guess the implication of maps? Suppose, okay, you can draw a map of something. It means that you know something very well, is that right? Like you can draw the map of your campus. It means that you can, it means you know every corner of your campus, is that right? So what does map stand for? Uh, knowledge. Yes, very good. Knowledge or information, right? Knowledge or information. This way we can get a clearer understanding of the hidden voice from the author that we have more knowledge of the surface of the Mars than of our own sea due to the lack of funding. Now, we have examined all the four examples given by the authors, all right? And it seems that we can use the proper association to get to know the hidden idea of a key sentence. Now, let's check whether we can use it to do the paraphrasing by ourselves. This is the whole complete, uh, it's a complete sentence, it's actually the whole paragraph 11, okay. But now I just want you to focus on the keyword jigsaw puzzle for our exercise. I just want to check whether we can grasp the meaning, okay, the hidden voice behind this sentence. So what is a jigsaw puzzle? Suppose this is a jigsaw puzzle of your heart. So how do we get the characteristics of jigsaw puzzle? Firstly, it is a complete one, right? It's a complete one. And then it's made up of so many parts, right? Now, if you take any part of it away, then your heart will be broken. That is to say, each part is important, is that right? Okay, now we know the features of the jigsaw puzzle. Now, I want you to fill in the three blanks here. All these findings of the deep sea make up into a blah, 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 in which every part is blah, 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 closely to each other, and every part plays a blah, blah, blah role. Okay, have a try. Now, let's think about it. How about the first one? Yeah. Think about that jigsaw puzzle of your heart. It should be a... Yes, it should be a, how about that jigsaw puzzle of your heart? It's not divided, is that right? It's a, yeah, you may get the adjective complete. Yes, very good, but that's adjective, okay. How about the noun form? 
completion. Yes, very good. Or you can also say complete whole, right? In which every part is closely to each other. Now, of course, we need a verb, right? And the ed form of a verb. So what's that? Yes, very good. Linked, okay, linked or connected, is that right? And then every part plays a, now that's easy, right? Yes, important. Or now you can't take anyone out of it means it's indispensable, right? Important or indispensable. That's it. It seems that we can, okay, get a better idea of the hidden voice, right? If we can grasp the implications of those key sentences and keywords. And that's what we have got so far. The five examples and five key sentences, and let's see how they are used to connect the facts to the theme. The first two hidden voices we have got just now show, they just tell us that we human beings still do not have enough explorations, and that is to show why we need to explore, is that right? And the third one, when he mentioned the experiment, the author is giving up an um, um, example to show how to explore. Is that right? And then, when he mentioned the lack of funding, he was doing comparison between the space exploration and the uh, deep sea ex exploration. He is telling us the, the difficulty, yes, the challenge we are facing right now. And finally, the jigsaw puzzle of the findings come to serve as a guidance for us to teach us how to find out the relation, how to find out connection between ocean and human being's survival. Is that right? Okay, finally, we can get a clearer understanding of the coherence that is connected by those key sentences and the hidden voices right behind them. Okay. Now, it seems that the author has stated his mind quite clear, is that right? We, it is urgent for us to explore the deep sea. And then, at very last, he calls on us that it is imperative that we keep pushing the limits of our own ocean. It seems that human beings are not just pushing the limits of the ocean, but also almost every part in our nature, such as the forest, the river, the desert, and so on and so forth, is that right? Okay, I think we should give it a second thought. To what extent should we push the limits of our nature? Now, let me show you two examples first uh, for your ongoing discussion. The first one is a very negative example. We all know the notorious Aswan Dam, right? People built it first to generate electricity and to prevent drought. But later, the Aswan Dam has also brought huge disasters to the Nile River, right? Because we didn't consider the environmental issues enough. That's a negative example. But another one is a positive one. Can you guess what is? What's that? Can you guess? Yeah, you mentioned Titian. So how to say that in English? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's terrace. Okay, it's a honey terrace located in Yunnan province. Now it's along the mountain fringes, ranging from 600 to 2,000 meters in altitude, and that may not be regarded as the ideal condition for cultivating the land. But honey people were quite smart. They were trying to make full use of the natural surroundings and the resources without changing its original features, without changing its original sceneries. That's to show a perfect example of how human beings and nature can coexist without doing anything harmful to it, right? We are pushing the limits of nature without making any damage. And that's just to serve as kind of uh, prelude for you to think about. Now, I want you to take on this ongoing discussion to write an essay on the topic and try this time use example and some figures of speech like metaphor, simile. Okay, next time when we come back to our class, perhaps I will teach you how to use those metaphors or similes in our writing as a writing skill. Understand? Okay, got it? Okay. That's all, for, that's all for it. That's all for it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Contestant number nine. Here comes the questions for you.
Okay. Mm, you're talking about critical thinking, but I'm not quite sure what is critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, for now, if we want to be critical about something, it means we always have puzzlement or doubts about something, or maybe we hold disagreement against something. So at first, we will have to understand what the uh, the author wants to say, and then we will have to give it a second thought. That what he is saying is that really logical, or is that really reasonable, or convincing or not? Now, if we are doing a kind of critical thinking, we can also think about. Uh, just the opposite part and the opposite phenomenon against uh, what the author has said. So we will have to divide it into two parts. That is for or against. That's what to be critical is about. So when the students are doing critical thinking or when we are doing the critical thinking, I think the best way is to uh, give it a second thought to figure out whether there is some other opposing ideas against it or not, can you find enough evidence to support it or not? So I think that is uh, the key point of critical thinking. Okay, I want to be critical, so I don't agree with your uh, for and against. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something in between. Mm -hmm. is, yep. it, is it possible? It is possible, actually, because just now when, we, uh, when I presented the two uh, examples, the positive one and negative one, you know, actually for the question itself, to what extent should we push the limits of the nature, we can always find something in between and find something in harmony. That is why, I mean, to give the evidence is to show, us, to show our ideas, but in the very end, we can use either way to, uh, as a conclusion, we can also combine the for's and uh, against to get a something in between to find out, uh, to reach a harmony. Yes. Okay, can I have a look at what you have in your hand? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, would you please look at this one, okay. the title. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's be critical. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong, what's it? The title here? The title itself. Yes, the title itself. Yeah, you're, you, yeah I, I'm sure. I think you've got uh, the different title from mine, but okay, he's using... So the students get, got the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the students get the same mm -hmm. as, you know, as you do. When we explore the deep sea, we're exploring for our own survival. Yes, the title itself. Mm -hmm. There is something wrong in it. Uh, the students, who can tell me what is wrong? Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, the, the we. We, W we in we yes. should be capitalized. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, but I have a, yeah, I'm sorry, I have a different version from yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. that's all. Thank, thank you, you very much.